Hi, and welcome to Getting Started with DeepGraph, Episode 3. In the previous episode of the tutorial, we learned about the operations that you can do using UIDs, such as creating new nodes, deleting them, or updating them. We also learned about traversals and recursive traversals. In this tutorial today, we learn about DGraph basic types and how to query for them. Specifically, we will learn about the basic data types in DGraph, what are indexes and how to use them to filter nodes, and finally, how to traverse edges in a reverse direction. First of all, we are going to run the database as we always do, thanks to Docker. So let's start by building the following graph of a simple blog application. So here's the graph model of our application. We have authors, blog posts, and tags, and an author is related to the blog post they published by the published predicate, and blog posts are related to tags by the tag predicate. Now, rather than writing the whole thing, I'm going to be copying a mutation from the blog post that you can find on the link down in the description. As you can see, there's a pretty large mutation, uh, and it just simply adds three different authors and some blog posts that are tagged with some specific tag, which is going to run it. So when you send the mutation, make sure that you're actually using localhost 8080. Otherwise, you will try to send a mutation to a read-only instance. So you can see that we have author name, rating, published. Um, rather than having to go over the whole thing, let's paste it again here and modify it to be a query that shows all of the data we have for the, in the graph. So I'm going to say something that has author name, which is indeed an author. And then I'm going to ask for the author name. I'm going to be asking for the rating. Uh, I'm going to ask for published. And then inside of published for every single blog post, we're going to get the title the URL, the content, how many likes and dislikes did it get, and finally, publish time and tagged. And inside of tagged, we're going to get the tag name. Now we can read off the rest, and hopefully if we run it, oh, look, uh, unclosed action, so one, two, three, one, two, three. Clearly we forgot one, so let's have one more. Great, and now you can see what the graph looks like. So this is simply, as we were saying, the result of the previous mutation. So if we zoom in a little bit, you will see that there are three authors, uh, Katy Perry, John Travis, and John Campbell, uh, which are the nodes in blue, that have published a series of blog posts, which are the nodes in green. And then we have the nodes in pink that correspond to the tags or the labels. So while we send the mutation, we actually already indicated some of the information about the types of those properties and predicates. So we can see that author name is indeed has been marked as a string, dislikes an integer, uh, etc. And uh, if we click on one of those int types, you will see all of the different types that DGraph supports. You can see that there are default, which is the default type for when we don't really know what's going on in there. <laughs> We have also booleans and date times and floats and geolocations and integers and passwords and strings and UIDs. Let's go back to a simpler query, which is going to get the authors with the ratings. And uh, let's say that we now want only to fetch the good authors, saying that a good author is an author that has a rating of more than four stars. How can you do that? Well, we have has rating, but how do we get a rating that is larger than, say, four? Well, you can use a greater than function. The problem is that when you try to use that, you will see that you get an error message saying that the rating is not indexed. How do you fix that? Well, you go back to the schema, check and say index. Now we are creating an index that is going to allow us to filter by that value. So now we're fetching only the nodes that have a predicate rating with a value attached to it of more than four. So 4.1 and 4.5. You can see that on top of greater than, you could use greater or equal, so 4.0, 4.1, etc. Uh, you can do uh, lo lower than, uh, lower or equal, or even equals. So let's go back to greater than zero, uh, greater than four, and get all of the blog posts that these good authors have published. So we're going to get the title. Great. So this works, and you can see that now. We lost Katy Perry. Katy Perry didn't have a rating high enough, apparently. The same way we got the published titles, we can also get the tag names. OK, so we saw before that publish, the published blog post also had a number of likes and dislikes. So let's fetch that too. Look in the JSON and see that we have dislikes are 4 and 2 and 
12. So let's say that, you know, you don't want to show the blog posts that have too many dislikes. So we're going to fill them out. So here, instead of setting that grade length function as the value to the thunk argument in the good authors query block, we're going to add it in a filter directive. So you can do this basically anywhere where you are traversing an edge or a predicate that goes from node to node. Here, we're going to say that we're filtering the blog post by getting those that have only fewer than 10 dislikes. And guess what? It will fail. Why? Because we don't have an index. How do we fix it? Exactly as before. We're just going back to the schema and adding an index. As soon as that's done, you can rerun the query and everything will work. You should see that some of the blog posts that had more than 10 dislikes are now gone. OK, so this is great and all, but what if we want to turn it around and start with the tags and go down into the authors? So let's fetch first all of the tags. You can see they have all of those tags. And now we're going to say that, you know, uh, I'm making a video for developer relations. So let's say Davril. So I'm going to fetch only the ones, the tags that have the name Davril. Again, when I run that, it was going to say, no, you cannot do this. So we go to the schema and we click on index and oh wow there are so many options here and we're not going to get into all of the options today but i'm going to talk only about two of them so we have exact and hash and term and full text and trigram exact allows you to do exact comparisons and hash it actually compares the hash of the string rather the string itself so let's try exact and see what happens so with exact it's going to work so now we're fetching the right uh the right node uh, also, you know, it's case sensitive, but also it allows you to say, I'm going to get anything that is devil or after uh, alphabetically or before, right? So those are things that you can do thanks to exact. Now, if you're not interested in comparing more than or less than, you could do hash. And hash will be a more space efficient index. When you run it, you will see that it works the same unless you try to do greater or equal or any other kind of comparison other than equal, in which case it will not work. So, okay, so now that we have the tag name, let's get all of the blog posts that are that have been tagged with the tag name Devrel. How would you do that? Well, we have not really talked about it, but there's a little tilde that you can add to the predicates to traverse them in the opposite way, in the reverse way. If you do that, that will fail because you need to first indicate in the schema that this predicate is something that you are allowed to traverse in reverse direction. Uh, Little trick is if you want to see the name of something in the in the graph, just simply rename it. This is an alias. You can say that I'm going to get a title as name, and rattle will display it like that. Uh, so okay, so now I want to also get the author name, right? And again, I need to go backwards in published. So I'm going to say I want to have a reverse edge on published, and there you go. And now thanks to this, thanks to indexes and reverse edges we're able to find the node that has a tag name of value devrel. And then from there, go back to all of the blog posts tagged with devrel, and then go back even farther to find the authors and their names. OK, so time to wrap up. In this tutorial, we learn about basic types, indices, filterings, and reverse edge traversals. So before we leave, here's a sneak peek into our next tutorial. Did you know that dgraph offers advanced text search capabilities? Those are actually one of the options that we saw in the indexes for string. How about geolocalization querying capabilities? Does that sound interesting? Then see you all soon in the next tutorial. Until then, happy graphing.